Imagine this happening to you. Or this. You will be really lucky if this ever happens to you with a hundred dollar bills. In fact, the chance of something like this happening to you is one out of ten million. We have all heard of jackpots in casinos and have dreamed of getting the same jackpot in ATMs. Many cyber criminals have only one goal in mind, to hit the ATM jackpot. There are several ways in which they do it. The easiest way to steal money from an ATM is to blow it up. Most criminals have done it because security cameras and other physical security measures are ineffective, although it is very dangerous for criminals themselves as they get hurt. Obviously, these methods would quickly draw the attention of law enforcement and passers-by. But there are criminals who are smarter than the previous ones. Moving on, today a Russian security company reported that it discovered one of the biggest bank robberies ever. No guns involved, hackers did it, breaking into more than 100 banks in 30 countries and making off with a total of as much as $1 billion. Here's Anna Werner. They used a technique known as jackpotting. With this technique, cyber criminals use malware and special hardware to trick an ATM into ejecting all of its cash, no stolen credit card required. Several jackpotting incidents have been detected around the world. In 2018, several cyber criminal gangs were planning a massive cash out operation in different parts of the world. They were unsuccessful as some group members were arrested. This technique has been used by the most famous cyber criminal gangs like Bandidos Revolutions, Cobalt, and Carbonac to earn millions of dollars per month. But how did these gangs do it? To understand this, we must know how an ATM works. ATMs are basically computers with BIOS and running the Windows operating system. Many have Windows 7 and others Windows XP. In their operating system, there is an application platform that supports all the different devices that are connected to an ATM. Different programs run on this platform that connect to the bank's server, and bank employees can remotely connect to the ATM to resolve problems. Also, there are security applications such as antivirus solutions that connect to the internet automatically for getting updates. The objective of these gangs was to take control of ATMs so that they could withdraw all the cash when they wanted to and this was only possible by using some malicious programs. So different malware developers started focusing on ATMs. It has been 10 years since the discovery of Skymer, the first malware variant specifically designed to attack automated teller machines. Most banks use ATMs of these five manufacturers, Diebold, Wincor, NCR, Triton, or Hitachi Omron. On the other hand, there are around 40 different malware or malicious programs, such as Dipcash, Atmosphere, Plotus, ATM Spitter, Alice, Cutlet Maker, Green Dispenser, ATM Ripper, Pylon, and FastCash, among others that are for sale in the black markets. These malware were an important key for these cyber criminals, as they forced the ATMs to spit out all the money. In underground Russian forums, these cyber criminals used to exchange knowledge and malware. Since most of them were not Russian speakers, their texts often had Russian misspelled words as they relied on Google Translate. Sometimes they simply wrote it in Spanish, English, or in their language, forcing Russian cybercriminals to use machine translation. 
despite the language barrier, these gangs successfully used all of this acquired knowledge to spread their jackpotting operations in Latin America, Asia, the US, and Europe. Their process of stealing money from the ATMs using malware had four stages. The first stage was mapping the ATMs and selecting the cash-out dates. In this stage, they searched for ATMs in different cities, focusing on those that had a lot of money and less surveillance. For example, they attacked ATMs during Black Friday, Valentine's Day, or the weeks of December when people received their Christmas bonuses. Since during these dates, ATMs have more money to meet the customer demand, and banks usually add 20% more funds than usual for these dates. They also monitored ATMs to find out the hours when there are no guards or police cars passing by. The second stage was knowing the ATM brand and model for getting access of USB ports. Usually the brand is mentioned in the front of the ATM. They would also take pictures of the ATM and Google them. If this didn't work, they took the help of their black market contacts to find the brand and model of the ATM. With this information, they bought the keys to open an ATM and access the USB ports. They bought these keys from black markets or with the help of corrupted bank employees. In markets like eBay or Alibaba, you could find the ATM key simply by typing the model number of the ATM and then buy it for less than 50 US dollars. And with this, they could open the ATM and access the USB ports. Knowing the ATM brand and model also helped them to search for the malware in the internet forums that will cause that particular model to spit out money. The third stage was installing the malware in the ATM system. After taking control of the USB ports, they used three types of attacks. The first attack is known as a black box attack. In this attack, they connected a mini PC, like a Raspberry Pi, to one of the ATM's USB ports. These ports are blocked with software that only allows them to connect a keyboard or a mouse so that bank employees could do maintenance on the ATMs. The black box with malware or USB with malware emulated to be a keyboard or mouse in such a way that when it was connected to an ATM, it recognized it as a keyboard and executed the instructions that were loaded in the memory. Then, they left the black box hidden and connected to it remotely as it had a GSM receiver. With the help of this device, they sent commands via SMS to the ATM to cash out. The second attack is known as offline malware attack. These cybercriminals would boot the ATM with an operating system that was on a USB drive or DVD, thus disabling all the ATM's security mechanisms. Then, they installed the malware on the original operating system. At the end of the job, they would remove the USB or DVD and restart the ATM. They used different malware variants. Some of them cloned the cards, and in other cases, they made the ATM to eject money. The ATMs looked normal without any modifications, and cyber criminals would return to the ATM when it had money and activated the malware by typing a few digits or inserting a special card into it. Using this malware, cyber criminals had control of all the money in the machine. The third attack they did was through online malware attacks. In this attack, they connected a USB with malware that took control of the software that the bank used to manage ATMs remotely. And then, with the help of the malware, they controlled the ATM remotely and its money. Using this, they cloned the cards that were inserted in the ATM and also forced it to vomit money. Fourth, and the last stage, was winning the lottery by withdrawing the jackpot money. Using all these attacks, they compromised between 100,000 and 200,000 ATMs in Latin America and thousands in Asia. Cyber criminal gangs worked with mules, corrupt bank employees, and malware vendors that collected money. These cyber criminals spent between $200 to $500 for malware, $10 for USB sticks, $20 for mini keyboards with mouse, $50 for the ATM key, and $100 for a Raspberry Pi. With this small investment per ATM and teamwork, they made millions of dollars a month. For cybercriminals, ATMs represent a gold mine. Financial organizations and banks have to be particularly vigilant when considering protection against malware for ATMs and payment systems. Financial institutions do not want to spend enough money on cybersecurity infrastructure since they have insurance against theft or robbery. Nonetheless, these insurances do not cover enterprises and individual bank clients. As clients may also experience financial losses due to banking fraud, companies should follow the best practices when considering protection of ATM networks, as well as successful and timely detection of attacks. If 
can just hope that in the future there will not be a World Cash Out Day. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and support us on Patreon. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new video updates.